Hello, I'm Tom Ellsworth, the BizDoc. I'm Amy Dangerfield. And this is Decision 2024, brought to you by Valuetainment. We're diving into the election because we're going to show you the words talk, but numbers scream. The controversies, the polls, the court cases, everything that's in front of us started back in 2020. 2020, the election looked like this. There were 306 votes ultimately earned by Biden in the Electoral College. 232 for Donald Trump. And it looked this way. Several of these states were battleground states through the election, leading to court cases and many things that we saw in the public eye after the election was over. Those states that were in the mix are still the ones in the mix. Exactly. So obviously the last election, we can see that Biden was able to take Arizona. He was able to take Nevada. North Carolina was won by Trump. The blue wall, of course, kept by Biden, as well as Georgia. So that was the battleground. And everybody thought that's the battleground as it's going to be today. We're going to show you the battle is different. Complicating matters, some states gained electoral votes, some lost them as a result of recalculation. Here's the ones that gained. We have Texas, which actually gained two electoral votes. This is obviously a Republican state. Same for Florida, gaining one vote. And then we have Colorado. Colorado also gained one. That is a blue state. Montana, a red state, also gained one. North Carolina is a red state. And then finally, Oregon also gained one, a blue state. So where did these electoral votes come from, Amy? Take us through. They come from the overall census of the population that determines how many states are elected, how many votes. And we actually saw some states lost electoral votes as well, Tom. We saw that California lost a vote, Illinois, Michigan, New York. So these are all primarily going to be blue states. Ohio also lost a vote, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia. So when you add this up, here's what you'll find. There were five electoral votes lost by traditional blue states, and there were two lost by traditional red states. The difference was three for the red states. So that red states, Texas and Florida, as you saw, the net gain for the traditional red states was three. Remember that number. We're going to come back to it at the final tally, and we're going to see just how big small numbers can be. Mm -hmm. So first, let's go take a look at where it is right now. Where are we standing, Amy? So a lot has changed since 2020, but this is where we were sitting before the presidential debate that just happened last week, Tom. And we can see that there has been a slight leaning for Arizona. Arizona is currently in the pink category, and it's exactly the same with Georgia. North Carolina isn't even mentioned. It was a battleground state before. Now it's thought to be very leaning Trump. Mm -hmm. And if you take a close look, Nevada was very blue last time. Mm -hmm. Now it's in a toss-up category pre-debate. And then take a look at New Hampshire. New Hampshire and Upper New England, which is traditionally very blue territory, mm -hmm. was leaning for Biden in a fairly significant way, but you're going to see a poll coming out after the debate, and we're going to dive in to see exactly what's happened. Those two states, Nevada and New Hampshire, were not part of the battleground. Now they are, and let's look at the weight they're carrying. So let's take a look at where the national poll was sitting before the debate happened. Now, obviously, Trump had a slight lead, but it was very slight, Tom. We're seeing a 41% for Trump, 40.9% for Biden. And then, of course, we have Kennedy, the third party wild card sitting at 9.3%. This was before the debate. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at how things changed after the debate occurred. So outside of headlines, what did the numbers say after the debate? So after the debate, we're seeing that Trump is taking more of a lead. We're seeing a 42.2% for Trump in the national polls, 39.7% for Biden. Now, of course, national polls don't decide an election, Tom, at the end of the day, that's gonna be up to the electoral college. However, it is very interesting to see the way these numbers have changed overall for the nation post-debate. Also shows you that it's a national mood and a national reaction to a national debate. Now, let's see what happened in a couple states specifically, because the national mood becomes state votes becomes electoral votes, and the electoral tally, the road to 270, is what elects the president. So right now, this is where, just to remind you, this is where we're sitting with New Hampshire teetering and Nevada in the undecided. Mm -hmm. 
However, a short time later, we're seeing early polls and analysis, and let's go to Nevada and take a look. What do we see here? So we are seeing, although Trump technically lost, uh, according to the most recent polls that we've seen, about a half a percent, we're seeing a huge widening for Trump, sitting at 5.9% lead, now sitting at a 9 percent lead and this is mostly due to the points that were lost by biden after the performance that he gave at the presidential debate so it's not necessarily votes that were gained for trump but votes that were lost for biden although there was a key bump that happened in nevada two weeks before the debate trump had gone on the offensive on tax policy for the workers Tremendous number of people in Nevada are servers, bartenders, hostesses, and they get tips. Trump announced, if elected, his tax policy would include a provision, no taxes on the tips. That had caused a little bit of a bump in Nevada. Afterwards, Biden's performance in the debate, as Amy said, he loses 3.6. We have polls right now that are saying Trump has as much as a nine point lead in Nevada. Now, I'm not sure about that. How long will this um, post-debate bump last? We'll find out. We need to settle in and see how the numbers play out. But for right now, we are seeing a widening for Trump, an impressive widening at that. Nevada, no one was talking about it. And we can say it is leaning, definitely leaning. And it's not just a sliver for Trump. Now, let's go to the other end of the United States to Upper New England mm -hmm. and New Hampshire. Yes, and this is a state that I haven't seen very many people talk about, Tom. This is a state that has been consistently taken by the Dems. However, now we are actually seeing for the first time in, I'm not exactly sure how long, but we are seeing a lead now for Donald Trump. Before, he was down 3.5% pre-debate. Now, post-debate, we are seeing a lead of about 2%. Now, can we say that this is going to maintain down to election day? No, we can't say that necessarily. However, right now, things are looking a little bit more promising for the Republicans than we've really seen in a very long time. Well, this is the last thing the Dems wanted to see was mm -hmm. two states, Nevada and New Hampshire, that weren't even in this battleground conversation in the spring. Mm -hmm. Suddenly now, not only in the battleground conversation, but at risk. Why is that important? You have to spend TV dollars, ad dollars. You have to make trips, which means the political parties can't take it for granted. You have to dedicate time and resource. And when you're trying to win the blue wall, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, big states with big electoral vote counts, the last thing you need is to have small states in play. Now, I don't mean that Nevada and New Hampshire, that those votes aren't important. They are important, but they're comparatively smaller on the electoral college level. So let's step back and see other pollsters. This is value team and analytics we've been showing you. We are looking into cross tabs. We're looking into the data sets. We're looking into the historical bias and accuracy when you compare last poll by a pollster to an election that the pollsters have. We're taking all that into consideration to the value tainment algorithm that leads to us making these projections for decision 2024. So what is the New York Times seeing compared to what we're seeing, Amy? You know, it's actually quite similar, Tom, when we compare the two slides. New York Times is seeing Trump up at 43%. So right now we are seeing about a 6% lead with Donald Trump compared to Joe Biden following the presidential debate. Incredible. We also go to New Hampshire, as we indicated, and there is one very significant poll that came from St. Anselm. Yes, indeed. And, you know, Tom, again, we haven't really seen that many polls come out of New Hampshire because I'm sure for many people, they consider it, you know, done and dusted. This is a democratic state. However, the latest data that has been published since the debate seems to indicate otherwise. And you can see the crossover in the chart there. Look at that. We have seen Biden consistently leading in this day throughout this entire period. Up until post-debate, we are now seeing Trump ahead with a true percent lead. Incredible. If this state is actually in play, they have to go and serve it. They have to run ads. They have to spend resources. Mm -hmm. So what does that do to the national map? Remember I mentioned those three electoral votes that was a difference this year to last year. Yeah, so now we're gonna dive into the value attainment call, which is the culmination of our own VT analytics, taking into account what other pollsters are saying out there, the New York Times, various other sources. 
and with 18 weeks to go, if the election was to be decided today, based on the data that we're seeing, this is the probability, Tom. We're seeing a 66 probability today that Trump would win the election. And why don't you explain why we have the blue wall still in the toss-up category mm -hmm. and the importance of New Hampshire and Nevada. Absolutely. Well, if we had done this video a couple of weeks ago, we probably would have told you the only way to win this election was through one of the states in the blue wall. And now Trump no longer needs to do that, Tom. Based off everything that we have already discussed here, now we are seeing such a strong widening, a strong leaning for Trump over in Nevada that we can safely account those votes, at least for the time being, and based on what we just discussed with New Hampshire, we can actually see a leaning for New Hampshire as well. So we can account for those votes at present time. And when we add all of these together, we're seeing 272 electoral votes for Donald Trump without even taking the blue wall. Remember at the beginning, we pointed out that there was a three electoral vote shift from north to south as some states gained and some states lost. And Amy gave you the list. If you take those three electoral votes off the 272 in our current projection. 269, it's one shy, it's so close. It's not a win, it's only 269. Mm -hmm. So with that shift, with New Hampshire and Nevada in play, we make our projection this week with 18 weeks to go mm -hmm. as a 66 percent probability anything can change we saw what just happened with the dramatic debate performance mm -hmm. who knows what either candidate will say or do or what will be dug up but we know one thing we will let the candidates talk and we will focus on the data because at the end of the day words talk numbers scream I'm Amy Dangerfield. And I'm Tom Ellsworth, The Biz Doc. We will see you next time with another deep dive as we head for the blue wall.